lab and were uh, uh, significant participants in the discovery of yet another major particle for the, in particle physics, that's the heaviest and most uh, uh, mysterious of the quarks, the top, the so-called top quark. So um, in a few minutes, that gives you a summary of her. She was obviously a very special person and um, a symbol, I think, of what we strive for at UCR. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mary. Um, I'll just remark that when I came to UCR, Anne was already retired. She had retired a few years before, but I inherited her office. So I, I'm, I'm forever linked, uh, at least through, through her office. So I'd now like to introduce our keynote uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Raymond Orbach. And I'm very honored uh, to introduce him indeed. Um, so Ray was a transformative chancellor during his 10 years at UCR. He was also actively engaged in research in the physics building and taught intro physics throughout his tenure. Um, a few forward thinking initiatives include growing the, the university against resistance from the office of the president, investing in emerging fields such as material sciences, and the construction of the science library, which is also a visionary building, which is what I put in the background. It also happens to be named after, uh, after Ray Arbach. Um, after leaving UCR, he became the director of science uh, at the Office of Science and the first undersecretary of science and is now at the University of Texas. So, um, so welcome Ray and uh, you're on. Well, thank you, uh, Ken, very much. And I, um, I joined Barry in memory of Ann. I knew her quite well when I came to Riverside. And uh, I hate to see her go. She was just such a wonderful person and so productive and made such an impact on the campus and the students. I would like to add my congratulations to the class of 2020, to the bachelor students, master of science and doctor of philosophy graduates. You're a wonderful group. I enjoyed watching the slides as they came on before the program began. Uh, the vitality and interest and accomplishment of all of you is something that we take great joy in. And it's a privilege to come back to the campus. I wish I was there in person, but at least electronically, I can explain how wonderful it is to be with you again. Those 10 years that I spent as chancellor with my wife, Eva, were truly the best years of our life. And Riverside became a very special institution. That picture of me, of course, is 10 years ago. And those of you who can see me will see the gray in my hair, so I have aged since then, but it was a picture that I took when I first came to the University of Texas. I was chancellor, as uh, Chair Barish commented, for 10 years, and I was a member of the physics department. I enjoyed interacting with both undergraduate, graduate students, and as he commented, I taught freshman physics every year that I was there. It was great fun to have office hours in the office of the chancellor and award the students food and drink uh, when they came in so that I could have them relax and not be too concerned about the formal nature of the office. My laboratory was down in the sub-basement and was as low a building uh, site as I could find because we were working with very, very sensitive pick up materials uh, called squids, superconducting quantum interference devices. And we had to bury them in the ground in order to avoid RF radiation. During that time, we discovered how to measure the correlation length in a correlated system. 
it was probably the first time that anyone had actually extracted the correlation length in a complex system. And it was done at UC Riverside with wonderful undergraduate and graduate students. As you all have experienced, the University of California Riverside is a very special place. It will always be a special place in my heart and I hope you will have the same feeling in yours. There are traditions that describe our campus. First of all, it's a campus of opportunity. Many of you are first time college students in your family and having the opportunity to take the most sophisticated courses from the most caring faculty is a very special opportunity and I hope you have enjoyed it. It's a caring campus. We care a lot about students, their life, not only while they're here at UCR, but follow their careers with pride and with interest. As you have already heard, it's a diverse and respectful campus. That has marked UC Riverside from the very beginning. We look like our community and we're proud of it. We are the most diverse campus in the entire University of California system. We remain so. Our students are proud to be on the campus and have shown what they can do in a competitive environment. We're also a campus committed to service. It's one of the primary objectives of the university. And we have served both community, state, national, and even international organizations. It's a campus that cares about its community. We do not have a town and gown problem. We have a town and gown tradition. UC Riverside has become a part of the community it now has a medical school dealing with the health issues of the Inland Empire. It was a commitment of the campus to the people around us. We care and we care a lot about our community. We also are the heart of economic growth in this region, in the state, in the nation and abroad. The technical accomplishments of our faculty and students are serving to drive the economic prosperity of first the Inland Empire, but then the rest of the United States and global efforts. It is a very special process that Riverside has pioneered in, uh, in terms of its relationship to its community. And finally, it's a campus of quality. We have quality students, quality faculty, quality facilities, and a sense of quality achievement. It's something that each of you can carry with great pride as you move forward in your respective careers. Now, let me talk a little bit about the department. We are now a department of physics and astronomy, and we are excited by the inventions and the um, discoveries that the astronomical community cosmology and so on have made. They are no longer separate from physics. It's an important part of our fabric. But we also look at all the aspects of the primary fields in physics. And this is something that each of you has experienced as part of your education. The department has its own commitment to diversity, not only in terms of its outreach and its students, but it's power program that is firmly embedded in the department and one that I think you can all take great pride in having. Each of you as undergraduates or graduates has experienced research firsthand. You've got your hands dirty, handling equipment, doing the most advanced research and getting a sense of discovery. It's something that very few other fields can achieve at our level of research. We are able to make discoveries that nobody else has and that will remain forever linked with us. It's a very special capability in physics as we develop new experiments, new theories, new simulations, and the ability to explore the universe. We have leading research programs as uh, the chair has already pointed out at both the national and international level. 
you've all experienced the state of the art equipment and support from the federal government and other sources in your research. We also are active in leadership in the physics organizations in the American Physical Society and in other organizations that support and enhance physics around the world. And finally, in the policy world, that was an area that I was privileged to participate in, in the government at the Department of Energy. And using physics as a tool to address policy issues is something very special. There are a lot of people who like to do policy work, but very few have had the quantitative and research background that each of you have. If you continue, you will find that that background gives you tremendous leverage when you get into policy and into the policy arena. People will re respect your honesty, your insights, your quantitative capabilities, and your commitment to society. It's all there in a physics education. And I think all of you should be very proud of what you've achieved. Now the future, and that's what's so exciting about physics. There are levels of basic research in, at the fundamental level. I like to think of it as curiosity driven research that look at the fundamental bases of physical laws. I've already spoken about the formation and future of the universe. We've discovered in the last two decades, concepts that were unknown previously, the expansion of the universe, the new uh, issues associated uh, with the expansion and the nature and formation of the universe itself. It's also an exploding world in what I call the strange world of the quantum. Uh, for those of us who grew up uh, in classical physics and in quantum mechanics, there are aspects today that seem bizarre. Entanglement to me is still a mystery, but all of you who are in the younger generation take it as a matter of course. It's an opportunity also for research. We are seeing industry now turning to quantum science, not just for computing, but also for sensing devices, for communications, for um, uh, um, cryptography. The whole world now seems to be using quantum mechanics as a tool uh, at a level that I have to say, very few of us ever anticipated. The biological world is based on physics principles and you have a biophysics program of real excellence and achievement. AI or artificial intelligence is everywhere now and your computational capabilities will make it easy to continue work in that area, a fascinating area with its own challenges and frankly, some fears that what it may do uh, to our society. Here again, policy and science come together, and I hope you will be active in that area. And of course, the environment. All of us live on this planet, and the issue of global warming and how we have contributed to it is a major concern. Uh, it's our home, and we only have one home. <laughs> and if we destroy it without realizing what we're doing, it will be our own fault. The next two decades are crucial for continuing the way in which human society has functioned. If we're not careful and we continue to increase the greenhouse gas forcing radiation, in the next two decades, we will see the earth in a different way. A hundred, maybe a thousand years from now, it will take it that long to recover if it ever does. So each of us has a fundamental responsibility to use our techniques, our commitment, our resources to deal with environmental issues. Many of you will go on in the applied research area, new devices, as I say, that are using quantum concepts, but it's broader than that. Physicists are found everywhere in economics and information processing on Wall Street. Physicists are well endowed uh, in the formation of policy and investment. 
there is physics insight into practical problems and issues. And I hope that all of you will use your talents to do just that. In the social sciences and humanities, there is a great deal now of scientific rigor, and it is based to a large extent on the principles that we all follow in the physical sciences. And those of you who are interested in those areas, I hope you will continue to use your rig rigorous training and analysis in those disciplines. And finally, as I talked about before, leadership in the policy world. For those of you who go on into law or into work in the government, either at the local, state, or national level, there is a real need for people who are involved in policy formation to have a solid scientific background. Very few do, and you can make serious errors without that rigor that each of us have experienced. As the chair has indicated, this is a difficult time. And this opportunity today of coming together is but one step in, I hope, working our way through this period. You have been blessed with diverse and energetic colleagues in your academic pursuits. You've been blessed with an environment of inclusion, which is so special to the University of California, Riverside. I hope that you will keep these blessings within you as you move on or continue your education. You need to keep Riverside in your hearts. It's a very special place. And I hope you will stay in touch with your alma mater. You will support it, you will help it, and you will be very proud of what you have achieved and what the campus will achieve in the future. And finally, individually, you have created knowledge through your research that nobody can take away from you. You have done something that is yours. You have experienced the frustration, but also the joys, the breakthroughs, when you understand the final understanding and nature of your accomplishments. This is something that physics offers very specially. And I have to say, I've been pleased and proud that I've been able to participate in that process. You've assisted others less fortunate than yourselves. As I looked at some of your plans, many of you are going on into teaching or helping others with your physics background. This is a UC Riverside tradition to help others. And I hope you continue to do that regardless of where you may find yourself situated in the future. Keep your sense of humanity and commitment to others. It's a Riverside tradition. It's a necessity in these times. As I wrote, carry these traits forward. We all need you and your commitment to fairness, to respect for one another. If our community our nation is to survive. Congratulations to all of you. I wish you a wonderful future and Godspeed. Uh, very nice, thank you very much, uh, Ray, for that very inspiring uh, keynote address. So our next, um, so now we'll move on to our um, undergraduate recognition program. And uh, Professor Owen Long, who's our undergraduate advisory chair, will uh, take it over. Thanks, Ken. So as Ken said, I'm the chair of the undergraduate advising committee uh, for the department. I've been in that position for several years. And one of the perks of that job is I get to know pretty much all of our undergraduate physics majors. And I can say that it's been a pleasure getting to know all of you. And I'm very proud of, of what you've achieved and what we're recognizing you for today. Um, so what I, I'm going to do next is announce all of the candidates for bachelor of science degrees for the class of 2020. So let me... Um, that on the screen for you. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the names of all of the students. And then also after that, I invited all these students to submit a picture and a message to share with you. And many of you uh, took advantage of that opportunity. So I'm going to go through those after I read all of the names uh, for our candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. So, um, these are our 45 Bachelor of Science degree candidates. Mason Biggerstaff, Gloria Casares, Oscar Chung, Brian Cubilio, Keanu Hia Jr. Daly, Peter Daniel, Nicholas Darden, Gray Dodgen, Jocelyn Fisher, Edison Freer, Calvin Glisson, Miguel Gomez, Miriam Gonzalez, Nathan Goatee, Christopher Guerrero, Eric Hagen, Jeffrey Hendricks, Ryan Hernandez, Franco Iglesias, Ethan Jarkin, Ronnie Krogstad, Jose Lara Espinoza, Arturo Lares Valencia, Clarence Lau, Jen Lee, Abby Leong, Adrian Louis, Andre Medina, Igor Miroshnikov, Justin Mullins, Cyrus Norelli, Aiden James Olvera, George Padilla, Bryant Fan, Lizeth Romo, Simon Sandofer, Andy Segundo, Emily Simpson, Tyler Smith, Joshua Suarez, Consecol Tree Logs, Tin Trong, Christopher Valenzuela, Andrew Vasquez, and Benjamin Yin. So please join me all in congratulating all of these students for their achievement. <laughs> okay, so um, this ceremony is all about you, the students. And uh, like I said, I wanted to en enable you to uh, share something with the rest of us. And so what I'm gonna do now is go through the, the slides that uh, students submitted to me. And what I want you to do when your slide comes up, please unmute yourself and turn on your camera and say hello to everybody. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for is for you to briefly say hello because we have a long program. Uh, but please go ahead and do that as I go through the slides when yours comes up. And also feel free to uh, uh, share uh, in the chat window as we go through. All right, so here we go. Uh, Mason Biggerstaff, are you with us today? And if uh, whoever's controlling the, the sharing, if, if you're spotlighting me, turn it off so that we can see the students who, uh, who are here. Okay, maybe Mason uh, couldn't join us today, but uh, he did, this is what he looks like. <laughs> All right, uh, Gloria Casares, are you here? I think I saw her name in the participants window earlier. She submitted this nice message about her experience. Okay, well, uh, let's move on. Uh, Gray Dodgen. Hello. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. All right, let's move on. Jocelyn Fisher. Hey. Congratulations, Jocelyn. Thank you. Next, Edison Freer with some sage advice. When in doubt, F equals MA. Okay, maybe you didn't join the Zoom session. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Calvin Glisson. It's a nice picture of Calvin. Jeffrey Hendricks. Hello. Hi, Jeffrey. 
Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Long. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. My pleasure. Jose Lara Espinoza, are you with us? Hello. Hi, Jose. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Here you're with some some friends. <laughs> Zhen Li. Okay, maybe it's not connected. Abby Liam. Hello. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Adrian Louis. Give you a moment to read what he wrote. Okay, next. Andre Medina. It wasn't short and it wasn't easy, but now I can do anything. That's very inspiring. George Padilla, are you connected? Not looking very sharp in that suit. Lizeth Romo. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, hi. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't know if they can hear me. Is that you, Lizeth? Yes. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Lizeth is going to be a teacher. Simon. Are you with us? Hi, Simon. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Emily Simpson. Okay. Is that you yeah. again? No, that was yes, the guy no. before. Hi, congratulations. Tyler Smith, are you connected? Yes, hello? Hi, Tyler, congratulations. Hi, thank you. Um, thanks, everyone. It's, uh, it's my daughter's birthday, so we're all. Oh, wow. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, Joshua Suarez. Mm, nice words from Joshua. Concept called tree laws. And by the way, I, I apologize if I mispronounced anyone's name. Some nice words from Concept Andrew Vasquez. Hi. Uh, hey. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and Benjamin Yin. Hi. Hi, Benjamin. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So uh, that's it for our uh, class of 2020. So uh, let's congratulate them again. So the next part of the program is going to be the undergraduate awards. So uh, let me change my setup here for a moment. I have to uh, position myself. Okay. So um, we have several uh, undergraduate awards to recognize the achievements of our students. And uh, for each of these awards, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the award sponsor who, uh, who, who uh, gave the funds to, to uh, give out these awards. And these are all people uh, with, with strong connections to our, our physics and astronomy community. So uh, let me first tell you about Robert Wilde. Robert Wilde came to UCR in 1953 at the time when the university was being formed. 
He was a founding member of the physics department and laid the groundwork for much of the department as it is today. In addition to the development of many of the demonstrations and experiments used in the teaching laboratories, Bob was also well known in the local community for many hands-on feats in his role as Mr. Wizard at school and outreach events. He had a long and distinguished career of scholarly achievement in condensed matter physics, which spanned 35 years. Bob retired in 1988. So I, uh, it's my pleasure to announce uh, two outstanding first year students uh, that are winning the, the Robert L. Wild Family Scholarship Award for outstanding first year student. So uh, let me um, go back to sharing my slides. And when you're uh, for the awardees, uh, when your name is called, please unmute yourself and uh, we can congratulate you in person. So the first recipient that I'd like to announce is Justin Berzia uh, Kel. Or sorry, <laughs> how do you say your name, Justin? <laughs> Justin Berzicello. All right, thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> Congratulations, Justin. Sorry for thank messing you. up your name. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all fine. Thank you for the honor. Great. And uh, the second recipient of the Robert L. Wild Family Scholarship Award for Outstanding First Year Student is Shruti Palur Malampali. Shruti, Hello. are you connected? Hello, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so let's keep going. Um, next, I have uh, another award sponsor that I'd like to tell you about. So um, this next award is sponsored by Michael Devarian. And he's had a very distinguished career, as you'll see. Michael Devarian graduated from UCR in 1966 with a Bachelor of Science degree in physics. He joined NASA and JPL and worked on the testing of the software used to process data from the Surveyor spacecraft, which was the first to land on the moon. From there, he went on to other jobs in the operations of planetary spacecraft, including Director of Flight Operations of the Voyager Project, which flew by Jupiter in 1979 and Saturn in 1981. After nine years in Washington, D.C. as a detailee to NASA headquarters, he returned to JPL to work on the Wide Field Planetary Camera 2 project of the Hubble Space Telescope. Michael received the NASA Medal for Exceptional Service for his work on Voyager and the Hubble Telescope in 1994. He became manager of the Space Sciences and Microgravity flight experiments in 1996, and then manager of the Origins and Fundamentals program in 2000. And he's currently manager of the Navigator program, which includes more than 10 space missions focused on the search for Earth-like planets and extraterrestrial life. Michael Devarian has operated at the highest levels of NASA, even though he never received a PhD. His highest academic degree is a Bachelor of Science in Physics from UCR. So it's my pleasure to recognize uh, another outstanding first year student. And again, I have to give me a second to reset what I'm sharing with you. Okay. So I'd like to recognize Bruce Bagby as the recipient of the Michael DeVarian Scholarship Award for Outstanding First Year Student. He's got a very nice tie in this picture. <laughs> Hello. Hi, right. congratulations. Thank you, I'm deeply honored, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, I have more awards. We have lots of awards. Let me uh, stop sharing that. Okay, um, moving on. Um, the next award is sponsored by Brown Williams. So let me tell you about Brown Williams. Okay, Dr. Brown Williams, an entrepreneur and physicist received all of his degrees, bachelor's, master's and PhD in physics from UC Riverside. He came to UCR from Alhambra after beginning the UC system at Berkeley. He's one of the first 
in, he was in one of the first master's graduate classes in physics at UCR. He feels he received an excellent education for which he's very grateful. He's had an interesting and rewarding career that was made possible by his experience at UCR. And his attending UCR was only possible because of the low cost of tuition at the time. And he would like to help others have the same opportunity. And so he established this Brown Williams Endowment Award. Dr. Williams spent many of his early years at RCA laboratories where he held several research and managerial positions. After leaving RCA, Dr. Williams had his own consulting firm and in 1990, he founded Princeton Video Image Incorporated. And the most well-known application of, of this has been the, the first downline in F NFL games. So if you've ever been watching a football game and you've wondered how they magically projected the yellow first down line on the screen, uh, he invented that. So pretty cool. Uh, in 2003, Dr. Williams became the chairman of the board at Evergreen Solar and he eventually became its vice president of research and development. He was with Evergreen Solar until 2011. So it's my pleasure to announce uh, three out, outstanding uh, uh, second year students. So again, I have to juggle my Zoom set up here for a moment. Okay. So I'm gonna introduce them one at a time. So uh, Brown Williams, the Brown Williams Endowment Award for Outstanding Second Year Undergraduate Student goes to Sanya Dami. So if you're with us, please unmute and say hello. Hi, Sanya. I see your oh. hand. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my God. Next, uh, Tristan Carlo Rojo is also the recipient of this award. Hello. Hi, Tristan. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And finally, Megan Sam. If you're with us, please uh, say hello to everyone. Right, maybe she couldn't join us today. Okay, uh, so that's first year and second year students. Let's move on to the third year students. Um, okay, we have a uh, I have another award sponsor to tell you about. So uh, the next awards for outstanding third year and senior students were both sponsored by uh, Stephen White, our Stephen White. So uh, Steve joined the UCR physics faculty in 1967 and initiated the new astrophysics program. He was the founding associate director of the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics, serving in this position for 25 years until 1992. His research had significant impacts in multiple areas, including nuclear physics, space physics, plasma physics, and high energy astrophysics. At UCR, he was a strong, tireless, and well-respected academic leader and educator, serving as the chair of the physics department from 1970 until 1973. So this is the sponsor of the following awards. First, we're gonna recognize three outstanding uh, third year undergraduate students. So let me introduce you to these students. The first student I'd like to recognize is Riley Gleason. Are you with Hello. us, Riley? Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, Daniel Morales. I think he let us know he couldn't join us today. And finally, Kishan Patel. This is what he looks like. Hello. Congratulations, Kishan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. OK, um, as I said, um, the R. Stephen White Endowment sponsored both the, the outstanding third year and senior students. And so I have three special senior graduating students that I'd like to tell you a little bit about. These are all uh, very outstanding students. 
And I want to share with you um, there's accomplishments uh, one at a time. So, uh, and I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. All right. So, uh, the Stephen, our Stephen White Endowment Award Outstanding Senior Undergraduate Students. The first recipient is Abby Leon. So, uh, in addition to her absolutely outstanding ac academic record, she has also distinguished herself in the research laboratory of Nathan Gabor, where she built a physical model for, of the infrared viewing system of a pit viper snake. And with it demonstrated how these snakes use sparse imaging pixels to reconstruct infrared images. She has been accepted into the PhD program at Cornell University. So uh, congratulations, Abby, on your outstanding achievements. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, uh, the next outstanding senior student that I'd like to introduce to you is Eric Hagen. So here's a picture of Eric. Let me tell you a little bit about him and his achievements. Eric has distinguished himself with his contributions to research in Professor Igor Barsikov's lab. So I'd like to share a quote with you from Igor. Uh, this is his, his words. My lab was recently visited by a prominent colleague from the Helmholtz Institute. He could not believe that an undergraduate student was able to design and build microwave elements of such high quality for magnetic spectroscopy. So they're really blown away that an undergraduate uh, student could do such uh, amazing work. So I'm told that Eric will begin his work on his PhD in material science this fall at UCR. So congratulations, Eric. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. I have one more outstanding senior student to introduce to you. Let me uh, introduce Tyler Smith and tell you a little bit about his achievements. Tyler distinguished himself with his work on the planet finding instrument of the W first space telescope in a NASA JPL summer internship. And he did such a good job that his, his JPL uh, mentor uh, asked to extend his, his, uh, his, his internship by several months at the at the end of the summer. I'd also uh, like to to let you know that uh, he is, as far as I know, he is the only UCR undergraduate this year to win to have won a prestigious National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. So these are very competitive, uh, and so this this fellowship will provide full financial funding of his first three years of, of graduate school, which he will do starting in the fall at, the U, at UC Irvine in their PhD program. So congratulations, Tyler. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Great. OK, so um, this concludes the, the section of the program recognizing our outstanding undergraduate students. So congratulations again to the class of 2020. All right, thanks, Owen, and congratulations to all of the graduating undergraduates and their awards. We're very, very proud of you. It's really, it's really impressive. It, it kind of blows me away hearing it all at one time. Um, so our next in our program is um, our talking about our graduate uh, students and awards, and Professor Yori Yarmov, who's our graduate advisory chair, will uh, present the uh, graduate award winners and graduates. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the ceremony so far. Um, before I get started, I would like to also offer my congratulations to the bachelor's award, the bachelor's recipients and the bachelor's award recipients as well. So I congratulate you for all your hard work and look forward to you having a successful future. Now, what I'm going to do is talking is uh, present the graduate degrees and graduate awards. I first want to mention that this is a little unusual for us. We normally have our graduation, our departmental graduation ceremony in person, and the one part of it that I might miss the most is the Thai food. It's kind of been a tradition that we have Thai food before um, this event every year. Unfortunately, we can't do that. But if any of you want to celebrate in the spirit 
of our previous ceremonies. I suggest you have some Thai food delivered tonight and um, think good things about our department. Okay, now to begin with, I am going to um, present the candidates for the um, Masters of Science degree. Uh, men, some of these candidates with the MS degrees have left us, um, but most are continuing on for their PhD degrees. And so I will read their names because these are all people who formally received their degrees during this year. Uh, they're William Baker, Christopher Kane, Cameron Chevalier, Malia Chevalier, Robert Dawson, Farima Faramond, Liz Finney, Nekul Gangoli, Adam Green, Mingda Guo, Meng Ho, Mehmet Kilith, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your names, um, Jackson Kishba Mesh, Brian Lee, John Lee, Jilin Yang, Yifan Lu, Eric Lloyd, Alexander Mercaldi, Madi Kazlu, Cameron Roxy, Joshua Ramis, Shirash Regmi, Varek Suizaki, Jonathan Turner, Chen Wang, Shishan Wang, Michael Worcester, Linke Ji, and Yang De Zhu. So congratulations to all of our master's degree recipients. Okay, now as part of PhD is primarily a research degree, but research and teaching are very connected. And to be an effective academic, you have to not only be able to do good science, you have to te tell people what you've done and explain it to them. And our students all have appointments as, as TAs as part of their degree program. And so what we'd like to do now is recognize the outstanding TAs um, and if you're one of these people, I would like to ask you to um, turn on your video and get your mic ready so you could say your hello and thank you. Okay, so our um, first outstanding teaching assistant award goes to um, Liz Finney. So Liz, are you available? Thanks, Jory. You're welcome. Congratulations. Our next outstanding teaching assistant is Mehmet Kalinic. Mehmet, are you available? Okay. Um, next one is Brian Scott. Thank you, and congratulations to everybody who's graduating. Thank you. Congratulations, Brian. Uh, Jeremiah Van Barren. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. And finally, Wei Li Zhang. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Um, now, for the next awards I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be giving away quite a number of awards. So I'd like all our award winners to go ahead and turn on their cameras and get ready to to unmute yourself after um, I say a few words about why you've earned this award, okay? So the first award I'm gonna talk about is the Albert Statz Award for Exceptional Skills in Designing and Building Physics Apparatus. Um, Al Statz was the first head of what we used to call the prototype building facility in the physics department. We now refer to it as the machine shop. Um, to show his passion for research and teaching, um, Al and his family endowed the Al Stats Prize. It's awarded each year to the graduate student who has um, done either use the pro, use the machine shop or other um, methods to build, to design and build physics apparatus. So this year's winner is Yuan Quin Lu who built an apparatus for precision spectroscopy of positronium. His research advisor is Professor Harry Tom. And what he did to earn this is he built and tested a precision spectrometer for positronium, which is used to test bounce rate quantum electrodynamics. Uh, because positronium atoms are 2,000 times lighter than hydrogen, and they only live for 142 nanoseconds, 
several innovations had to be incorporated into the instrument, and this instrument will advance optical spectroscopy for both unstable and stable atoms. So, Hi. Well, thank you. you there? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Congratulations, and I hope to see data pouring out of that instrument. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, great. Um, our next award is the Ben Shen Memorial Award for Outstanding First Year Grad Student. Um, but first, I want to tell you a little bit about Ben Shen. Um, ben was a distinguished professor of physics. He graduated from UC Berkeley in 1965 and then joined UCR in 1969. He spent 38 years of service at our campus. He was instrumental in the founding of the high experimental high energy group at, in our department, which is still outstanding and still doing great work. He also served as chair of the department three times. Um, during one of those stints, I was hired, and so he was the chair that I negotiated with. And I also kind of think of Ben as being kind of a mentor, not necessarily scientifically because we're in different fields, but more in terms of how to navigate the university and um, campus politics and all of that. He was a really understood things to a very high degree. Okay. Um, his honors include election as fellow of the American Physical Society, the American Association for Advancement of Science, a foreign member of the Academy of Science of the University of Bologna, and he held many other appointments as visiting scientist or visiting professor at many institutions. Uh, he was a member of the URA Board of Overseers for Fermilab, and he served on many other UCR and UC system-wide committees. And one of the other important things he did is he acted as an informal science advisor to the late Congressman George Brown, who was a congressman from our local area. Now, the outstanding first-year graduate students um, are mostly recognized for their work in courses because our students spend their first year taking courses, and two students stuck out really well um, for us, stuck out strongly. First one is Haiyo Lu. Are you here to um, say hello? Hi. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. This award, and I hope to see many other awards as you continue on with the program. Our second um, award winner is Andrew Weldon. Andrew? Hi, everyone. Hi. And congratulations to you as well. Thank you. OK. Now, Ben Shen is also responsible for, um, or Ben Shen's fund is responsible for the outstanding um, junior graduate student researcher awards. So the first one goes to Chris Kane. Uh, Professor Anson D'Aloisio is his research advisor. And Chris did theoretical cosmology, or is doing theoretical cosmology. Um, yeah, I will finish, I'll let you speak after I'm finished describing what you did. Um, your first, Chris's first project was a study of the epoch of reionization. And he earned this award for remarkable productivity despite just having finished his second year in the program. Uh, Chris has already authored four papers that are either published or under review. So Chris, are you available to um, say hello? Hello everyone, thank you very much. Okay, congratulations. Um, the next award winner for Outstanding Junior Graduate Student Researcher is Jessica Doppel. Professor Laura Salas is her research advisor. And Jessica's work focuses on the study of globular clusters and their connection to galaxies and dark matter halos. She's a third year student who has been honored with a German Academic Exchange Service Fellowship. And she's already published a paper as part of an international collaboration. In addition, she's a co-founder of POWER, the physics organization for women and the underrepresented which is a graduate student organization that provides peer support and advocacy, and they are making a big difference in our department. So I'd like to congratulate you, Jessica. Are you there? I am. Thanks so much. It's, it's an honor to get this. Thanks. Right. Congratulations. Thank you very much for all the things you do for us. Okay. 
The next award is the Ann Kernan Award for Outstanding Senior Graduate Researcher. Um, you've already heard quite a bit about Ann Kernan at the beginning um, by, with the memorial presented by Professor Barry Barish. So I'm not going to say more about Ann herself, but I'm going to mention that this fund has been around for a while and we currently have four students that are either still with us or actually graduating right now. Um, these previous Ann Kernan Award winners are Tara Featheroff, Mark Lohman, Jeremiah Van Barron, and Cliff Chen. So Ann's fund has had a big impact. This year's winners of the Ann Kernan Award, uh, first one is Hamid Asasi, and Hamid is a condensed matter theorist who just finished his fifth year and he's written two important papers, one in Physical Review A and one in Physical Review B. One of these is a collaborative effort that concerns quantum computation, while the other provides an explanation of recent novel experimental measurements of the quantum Hall effect. So, Hamid, are you Hello. online? So Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you. Our next um, award winner for the Ann Kernan Award is Sanez Panahenda. Professor Roya Zandi is her research advisor. Now, Sanaz just finished her fourth year in the program. She works on theoretical biophysics, and she's completed two projects related to protein nanocages and the components contributing to the stabilities and symmetry. She was the first author on two papers reporting these results, both of which were published in top-tier journal, journals of Nanoscale and ACS Nano. So, Sanaz, are you available to acknowledge Hello. the award? Hi, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for the honor. Sure, and well-deserved. Thank you. Okay, so finally we're going to get to the Robert Poe Memorial Award. Um, this is presented to the outstanding academic, um, for outstanding academic and scholarly performance by a PhD graduate. So this award is, is the highest award that our department gives and it's reserved for those who are graduating this year. Now, Bob Poe came from Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory and joined the faculty in UCR in 1964. He was one of the founding measures, members of the physics department. I know we are now the physics and astronomy department. We started as the physics department. And he initiated the research program in relativistic heavy ion physics, which is still carried on by some of our faculty. He was a true public servant and he devoted much time to activities outside of research and teaching. For example, he had a passion for energy conservation. During the energy crisis of the 1970s, he's helped the city of Riverside and other countries such as Taiwan uh, plan for the future. He was also involved in the construction of the first synchrotron and setting up an atomic physics research group at National Taiwan University. It was sad that, was on, that he was on a trip to Taiwan during which he passed away from a heart attack. Um, National Taiwan University honored him with a building, the Robert T. Poe Memorial Lecture Hall, and the city of Riverside honor him, honored him with the naming of the Robert T. Poe substation, which you can find in downtown Riverside. His family and friends have endowed the Poe Memorial Award for Outstanding Graduate Research. This year's winners of the POEM Award are, first of all, Trevor Arp. Professor Nathan Gaber is his research advisor. Now, Trevor is a condensed matter experimentalist who's now finishing his PhD degree. He's been involved in the development and deployment of newly designed state-of-the-art atomic layer material, um, optoelectronic devices, and new and ambitious experimental techniques. He's the first author on four papers in high-profile journals, including one in science, one in nature photonics, and one on nano letters. And he's also a co-author on, on a fifth paper. So that's a pretty um, impressive record for, for a graduate student during your career. Trevor, are you here to um, say hello to everyone? Hello. Uh, thank you for the time. All right. Congratulations, and I wish you success wherever you're going next. Um, our se second award winner of the Poe Memorial is Mark Lohman, um, who worked with Professor Jing Shi. Um, Mark works in a competitive area in condensed matter physics, which is 2D materials, 
Van der Waals heterostructures and nano devices, which includes graphene, transition metal dichalginides, layered magnets, and more recently, alpha ruthenium chloride, which is a quantum spin liquid candidate. Uh, Mark performs material characterization with an array of techniques, advanced nano device fabrication, and low temperature transport studies. He published two high impact papers in nano letters as first author, and he's the, a co author in eight other papers, including one in Nature. So, Mark, are you available to yeah. say hello to everyone? Hello, thank you. Right, and congratulations to you. Thanks. Okay. So, what I want to do now is um, list the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. This is basically everybody who got a PhD from our department this year. So I'm going to just read their names now. And then in um, a little bit, we're going to learn a little bit more about some of these. Okay, so first of all, Basim Arkuk, and you can see the, uh, the name of their research advisor in parentheses, Trevor Arp, Mohammed Hamdi El Elhashash, Lydia Elias, Tara, Tatha Featheroff, Shane Kelly, Christina King, Yawen Liu, Mark Lohman, Adrian Nosik, Victor Ortiz, Jackson Pitts, Robert Schaefer, Remington Sexton, Wine and C, John Spaulding, and Jeremiah Van Barron. So I'd like to give a congratulations to um, Congratulations to all of our PhD candidates for this year. Okay. So now we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, some of these candidates have given us information about themselves. And what we're going to do is I'm going to share a slide about them uh, that's going to have their picture, something from their research, the title of their dissertation. But I'm going to ask their research advisor to unmute themselves and speak for about a minute about the student. Okay? So, um, the first one is Basim Arkuk, whose research advisor is Igor Barsakov. Igor, can you say a few things about Basim? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you. Um, today, it is my great pleasure to announce Basim Arkuk to receive his PhD degree. Um, after starting his research on carbon nanotubes photonics, uh, Basim had to change the group and joined my lab, which works on experimental spintronics and which was on uh, in its uh, very early stages at the time. So despite these challenges, Basim did a great job. Uh, he built up experiments for microwave spectroscopy and accumulated uh, admirable expertise in nanofabrication. In uh, his dissertation, as you can see here on the slide, uh, Basim explored the two-magnet paradigm, whereby combination of two materials uh, properties can be engineered that would not be achievable with a single magnetic material. Um, this approach leads to quite complicated spin physics, which Basim very much succeeded to disentangle. So he did a really great, great job. Um, he further demonstrated how these two magnet nano devices can be used for energy efficient spintronics, uh, such as magnonics and neuromorphic computing. Um, Basim's dedication to research has established him as a go-to expert and, uh, in our lab and beyond and helped us to secure external funding. Uh, I and all our group members would like to thank him for his hard work. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And congratulations, Basim. I don't know if you're there to, to yeah, say hello yourself. Thank you yourself. so much for Professor Jory and uh, Professor Egor. And it's a pleasure to, to be one of his students. And it's a pleasure to be in this department in UCR. Thank you so much. Thank you and congratulations. Okay, the next student we'd like to highlight is Trevor Arp, whose research advisor is Professor Nathan Gaber. Nathan, can you say a few words about Trevor? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, maybe I can start by saying that uh, when I give talks around the country, I'm often talking about very different things. Sometimes uh, electron hole pairs in semiconductors, sometimes uh, photosynthesis, sometimes vipers. Um, and I would say that Trevor 
is one of the people in my lab who has enabled me to do that sort of crazy science. Uh, he's been a great person to have in the lab. He's developed an incredible set of instruments. He's been a leader to all of the graduate students in the group and outside the group. Uh, but I think the thing that I appreciated most about Trevor in the group is that he very courageously followed me into some places that most graduate students would say are absolutely crazy. Um, and we've had a lot of success because of that. And I think in no small part because of the work that Trevor's done in the group. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Trevor, would you like to say a few words? I know you Thank just you, did. Um, it, it's, I've had a, a really amazing time following you into these various crazy places. <laughs> So, um, so thank you for saying that. Okay, congratulations. Oh, can I mention one more thing. Uh, he is going to Santa Barbara to do a postdoc with an incredible group, uh, and we're very proud of him for for, right. for moving on to to do that. So, congratulations, Trevor. Oh, that's great. Uh, the po a PO award, a PhD, and a postdoc. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> doing wonderful. Nice to see all this. Okay, our next student we're going to highlight is Mohammed El Hash Hash whose research advisor was Jill, is Jillian Wilson. Fortunately, Jillian couldn't be here, but she did leave a message for Mohammed. Dear Mohammed, I am so proud that you are graduating today. You are one of the very best graduate students I have ever had the pleasure of advising. Ever since the time you wrote to me from Egypt to ask if I was accepting students into my group, I had a strong feeling that we would make a good team. You have managed to surpass all of my hopes. In your time at UCR, you have matured from a competent scientist into a world expert in galaxy clusters and in cluster cosmology. You developed a completely new technique for determining galaxy cluster membership, applied that to create one of the best cluster catalogs in the world, and then used your catalog to make one of the best measurements of the amount of dark matter in the universe. Your love of science, optimistic attitude, and humbleness are constantly on display. You have become a true colleague and a valued friend, and I look forward to our future astronomy adventures together. I wish you every success in your future career. Congratulations and well done. Okay, Mohammed, are you here to say a few words? Yeah, I'm here. So yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to thank you uh, for all of you. I would like to thank Professor Julian for her great words to me. And yeah, I hope uh, great work for all of you for the future. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Next student thank we'd you. like to, to highlight is Lydia Elias, whose adventure, whose um, advisor is Professor Laura Salas. Laura, are you here to say a few words? Yep. Okay, you're on. All right. So uh, yeah, Lydia thesis um, deals with the formation of galaxies and its connection to um, the other more extended part of galaxies, like is the dark matter halo, the gas and the stars. So Lydia has been excellent on uh, the analysis of the state of the art cosmological simulations um, that are at the forefront of our understanding on development of the theory of how galaxies form within this cosmological context. Um, but besides all the amazing science that she has done, so I just wanted to highlight that Lydia has been an outstanding student from the beginning. Always, I think what, what, I, what we always remember of her is her attitude, her happiness, her energy, and uh, always very respectful to peers and uh, instructors and, and mentors. Um, so her excellent work ethics, responsibility, and uh, reliab reliability um, earned her uh, the outstanding award in her second year as a grad student at UCR. And then the following year, she was accepted in uh, the Kavli summer, um, summer school 
for computational astrophysics that is one of the most renowned uh, programs in our field and she was chosen uh, one of the 40 um, outstanding graduate students across the world so she has um, filled us with proud during her career so today she will graduate with a very prolific thesis that includes uh, three papers published as a lead author in um, very famous journals in astrophysics and one paper as co-author and is frantically working on a fourth. Um, so she has built an enormous and very solid background, of course, based on her amazing skills, but also on effort and dedication, which we all really appreciate. So the group and myself are going to miss her. And um, yeah, I'm very proud to introduce you to Dr. Lydia Elias today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lydia? Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Laura, um, for being just the best advisor. And thank you to my friends and family for all their support. Woo! <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Next student we're going to um, highlight is Tatha Featheroff, um, whose advisor is Naveen Re Professor Naveen Reddy. Uh, Naveen, are you available? I'm here, Jory. Okay. Yeah, so um, Tara, <laughs> uh, Tara has done some very important work on quantifying the spatial distribution of dust and stars um, within distant galaxies, which is a key uh, step in understanding the uh, stellar growth and chemical enrichment of galaxies throughout cosmic time. And I think the thing that struck me most about Tara is rather than me just telling her what to do, she's actually developed her own new techniques in constructing uh, spatially resolved maps of stars and dust based on imaging from the Hubble Space Telescope. And she's also developed her own new method of quantifying morphologies of galaxies based on examining the distribution of low and high surface brightness pixels uh, within galaxies. And I think this is a, a new uh, measure of morphology, which will um, quickly gain steam in the community. Um, throughout Tara's graduate career, she's demonstrated a very high uh, level of technical capability, uh, technical ability and unusual creativity. Um, and on top of all that, she's also doing research on exoplanets. Um, but uh, I believe all the skills that Tara has will take her far, and she has a very bright future of, ahead of her. And uh, congratulations, Tara. Okay, thank you, Tara. Hi, thank you so much, Naveen. Um, I also want to thank the entire, like astro all of the astronomy faculty and astronomy graduate students for the great sense of community um, and support and conversations. Thanks. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Okay. The next student we're going to highlight is um, Shane Kelly, whose research advisor is Professor Sean Wen Tsai, who also unfortunately isn't here, but Sean Wen did leave a message for Shane. Hello, everyone. This slide is for Shane Kelly. In his PhD, Shane made a number of scientific contributions. Shane found new quantum states of matter. Shane proposed a method to measure the indefiniteness of macroscopic cat states. Shane found a new mechanism for breakdown of thermalization in a quantum system. This just to mention a few of Shane's contributions. This figure that you see in this slide is taken from Shane's PhD thesis. And believe it or not, it's a picture of a cat. Uh, more specifically, a Macroscopic Schrodinger cat that can be dynamically created in a bosonic interferometer. So, if you enjoy cat videos, uh, Shane created a number of videos of quantum cats, and maybe he'll start a new YouTube trend with them. Shane, congratulations! Enjoy the celebrations. Okay, Shane, are you available? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you to Sean Wen. Uh, this this whole five, six years was was super fun because of her and uh, the other students at UCR and faculty. But thank you. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Okay, the next um, student we're going to highlight is Mark Lohman, whose advisor is Professor Jing Shi. 
Jing, are you available to say a few words? Yes, I am. Um, first of all, congratulations uh, to Mark. Mark, you've done a great job. Uh, it has been uh, my, uh, truly my pleasure uh, to be Mark's advisor in the last uh, five plus years. Uh, as Professor Yamov uh, already mentioned in his, uh, when he received, uh, uh, when he announced his uh, um, award, a poll award, uh, for Mark, and uh, I will. Uh, there are many things to talk about. Uh, talk about Mark's achievement in the last few years. Um, so uh, uh, I, I will not repeat. Uh, so let me just uh, um, mention one thing. Um, Mark is extremely hardworking, motivated student, and uh, I don't know uh, anyone. Probably uh, nobody does that as Mark does. He drives uh, 130 plus miles every day, more than five days a week, and lasts a number of years to work. And uh, he figured out uh, how to beat 91 traffic on 91 highway. So the solution he found was um, get up, up around five, four o'clock, five o'clock and hit the road before anybody else does and uh, going back home um, after traffic hours. So that's his life uh, uh, in, his, uh, in the last uh, five years or so. Uh, so Mark has uh, been, as I said, hardworking, very productive. And uh, um, in addition, he's a very nice person and he never turned down anybody's um, request for help and uh, he's uh, many people know uh, know Mark uh, and uh, work with him. So Mark, congratulations again. Okay, congratulations. Mark, would you like to? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Xi and thank you to the whole department. It's been a pleasure to be in your group and also to be a part of UC Riverside Physics Department. Okay. Thank you, congratulations on your award and your degree. Um, the next student we'd like to highlight, the next uh, PhD candidate, is um, Remington Sexton, whose advisor is uh, Professor Gabby Canalizo. Um, are you available, Gabby? Yes, I'm here. So I believe Rem wasn't uh, able to make it to the ceremony today, but I still want to congratulate him for his great achievement. Um, just in a nutshell, what Rem is doing with, what, what he has done with, with his thesis is to study the correlation between supermassive black holes and the galaxies that they live in. Uh, but not in the present day, he goes to large distances in the universe so that they can, he can see them, how they relate to each other in the past. Uh, it was a real pleasure to see how Rem matured as a grad student while he was here, to see him from how at the beginning when he was doing this study, every time that his results were different from what was in the literature, he immediately assumed that his results were wrong. And it was great to see how as he matured and as he became um, more uh, sure of what he was doing, as he developed his own methods and was able to test what other people had done, he finally realized that he was better at this than what other people had done. Uh, he realized he found many different biases that other people had ignored. And in the end, he was able to write his own software to do the analysis that is uh, very intricate. And in fact, he just published uh, the software as an open source code. So I'm very proud of Rem and I would like to, again, uh, congratulate him, even though he's not here. And just very briefly, he was also a recipient of the Fields Fellowship. And one other distinguishing thing that he has is that he's an excellent writer, where when, when he gives me drafts of his papers, I only have to add commas at the most. So congratulations, Ren. All right, thank you. And I'm sure he would thank you if he was able, if you were here and able to. Okay, the next student we'd like to recognize is Wainan C, whose research advisor is Professor Gail Hansen. Gail, you'd like to say a few words? I see he did put a slide in. 
I just got an email about one hour before the meeting started that he didn't register. He decided to go out and enjoy the sunset. Sunshine. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I guess I get to talk about him. Wayne has been a great graduate student. He hasn't finished his PhD thesis yet. He's been working very hard. And he also has, um, did I start my video? I did. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so Wayne has been working very hard finishing an analysis on search for self interacting dark matter. And he spent uh, several years working on CMS um, um, silicon pixel detectors. Uh, he was first um, a summer student at CERN before he joined UC Riverside. And after that, he's, he's worked for, for many years on the pixel detectors. And then he's been working uh, for a couple of years on self-interacting dark matter search. He's been based at Fermilab the past several years. He was um, um, a graduate scholar at Fermi Lab, that's a USCMS uh, position, and um, he's, done a, he's done a great job. So right, at, right now he's under kind of a lot of pressure because he needs to finish the analysis, and in addition, on Tuesday, he has an interview for a postdoc position. So, okay, I guess I can excuse him for not, uh, not showing up for this. So anyway, oh, oh yes, he won a he won a second year graduate student award. Ah, Whenever he yeah. was, I think that was 2016. Yes, he did. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Gail, and <laughs> okay. congratulations to Wine Um so, sorry, sorry, he's not here to. Um, yeah, to I have to. I just noticed in my email about half an hour ago that you decided not to register. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, the registering takes is very quick, but whatever. I know. So congratulate him. He didn't do okay. it. All right. So I said, All I right. have to speak to him. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you, Gail. All right. The next student we'd like to um, acknowledge is John Spaulding, uh, whose research advisor is Sean Wen Tsai. And as she wasn't here before for the other student, she is uh, recorded a message for John. This slide is for John Spaulding. In the first part of his PhD, John proposed a new approach to study quantum critical points that is based on a quantity called quantum entanglement entropy. In the second part of his PhD, John studied two types of insulators, a Mott insulator and an Anderson insulator. One is due to effects of interactions, the other due to disorder. John then studied a system where there is competition between these two. And the figure you see here on the slide is John's depiction of this competition. But what this picture does not tell you is that John also found a possible special case where these two effects actually cooperate to give rise to new behavior, new behavior that is not an insulator and that would not be possible without the combination of both effects. John, congratulations on your PhD. Okay, thank you. I'd also like to congratulate you, John. And are you there to say a few words? John? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little distorted, but I can hear you. Okay. Um, I just want to thank uh, Shen Wen. She's been a really patient and really uh, helpful advisor. Um, and um, uh, it was fun to work with her. Okay, thank you and congratulations to you. Thank you. Okay, the final student we're going to um, recognize for receiving the PhD today is Jeremiah Van Barron, uh, whose research advisor is Professor Joshua Louie. Joshua, you'd like to say a few words? Hello, um, uh, it is uh, really my pleasure um, to be the advisor of my student, Jeremiah Van Baren. Jeremiah got his bachelor degree at the University of New Hampshire. He started his PhD at uh, UCI in 2013. He, he first joined Kawakami's group and later transferred to my group. And Jeremiah is my first student at UCR after I come here. And we have worked together side by side to establish our new lab at UCR. Jeremiah is a kind, responsible and capable student. 
It is a pleasure to work with him. And he has worked together with my postdoc to explore the novel excitonic physics in two dimensional semiconductors. Our research led to a few significant publications. Overall, I'm very thankful to have Jeremiah as my student and also as my friend. Jeremiah, thank you and congratulations. I wish you all the best after graduation. Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Joshua. I appreciate the you know very kind words. Um, yes, I just want to thank you for all of the support that you've given me, and you know to everybody else in the department that has you know been so helpful. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to congratulate all our graduates and award recipients and thank everybody who's here for help sharing in this recognition ceremony. Also want to point out that um, I know Bruce had a cool tie. I've got similar tie as well. Um, so let's give our congratulations to our PhD recipients and award winners. And I will turn it back over to Professor Barish. All right, Troy, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll give my own congratulations in a second, but I also got a message from uh, the Dean of CNAS, Catherine Uhr, who actually was able to join um, uh, for much of the ceremony, but then had to leave. Uh, and she wrote, the class of 2020 will always be special. While we don't have the pomp and circumstances here, we do have enormous pride in your accomplishments. Congratulations, graduates. And also I would like from not just myself, but from all of the faculty and staff to congratulate um, all the graduates as well as the award winners. And of course we wish you um, all that's best. Now we're not quite done yet. Um, I have, we're gonna go out on um, uh, a, a video with a sound. Actually, it comes from one of the, the one of the authors or the author for the lyrics, uh, not for the music part, was uh, Professor Robert Wilde, who you heard was the founding member of the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Um, so that uh, will be played next. I just also wanted to say that um, we're going to leave uh, this Zoom session open in case anyone wants to stay and perhaps coordinate with their advisors. If you wanna meet up as families, um, they could set up their own Zoom sessions. So I'd, uh, unfortunately, normally we have reception afterwards and that's always a nice time to meet and greet and talk. Um, it's more difficult, but at, at least uh, in case it works out, um, I mentioned that if you'd like to stay on for that. So. Again, my personal congratulations. It's really blows me away, both undergraduate and graduate, all the accomplishments. And um, I, I feel very proud. Uh, and you should feel proud as well as, uh, as, as, well as your families. And um, again, I encourage you to keep in touch um, in the future. Hopefully we'll go back to in-person. You can have the Thai food. You'll be invited back every year as alumni. And I hope that not only stay in touch, but that we uh, see you again in person uh, at some of these celebrations. So I think I now turn it over, okay, to David to play the... You see our fair home martyr, jewel of old you see. Fiat lux a shining vision light to set minds free. Seeking ever, yielding never, old Scots near and far. Waft our love back to the highlands. Hail, fair you see. Orange trees blooming in the highlands, boy tower chimes ring clear. Standing tall twixt mountain desert, Scots all hold her dear. Seeking ever, yielding never, hold Scots near and far. Waft our love back to 
the highlands, hail fair you see are. All right, very good. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed the celebration. Uh, thanks for taking part in, uh, and uh, for our first online version of one. And um, again, if anyone wants to coordinate, they can use the chat to set up uh, uh, um, uh, other sessions uh, or, uh, or to stay as a group or else is running late. So I'm sure you may want to go off. So again, congratulations. Um, and uh, thank you.